Megan. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us out here this afternoon at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. We're here live in Florida as we welcome the arrival of NASA's SpaceX Crew-9 crew members, Commander Nick Haig, and Mission Specialist Cosmonaut Alexander Gorbanov. This will be their last stop before they launch as a two crew member flight aboard a SpaceX Dragon to the International Space Station no earlier than September 26th. I know we are all very eager to talk to the crew, but before we do so, I want to pass it off to Kennedy Space Center's Deputy Director, Calvin Manning, for opening remarks. Thanks, Reagan. Good afternoon. Great to be here and see it, everybody. What a day to welcome these two amazing crew members to the world's most premier spaceport. Our spaceport has supported over 60 launches this year, each one unique, each one important, and each one exciting. But despite the frequency of these launches, they are never routine. In a moment, we will welcome Nick and Alexander, who will be part of the agency's ninth operational crew rotation mission with fellow astronauts Butch and Sonny aboard our amazing International Space Station. But before that, I would like to take a moment to recognize our incredible NASA and SpaceX team whose diligence and dedication to this mission started months ago. Your commitment to the mission and the people supporting it do not go unnoticed, and we are grateful for all of you. All the ground ops preparation for Crew-9 mission will culminate on launch day, but we still have a busy, days, uh, busy days ahead of us as we go through our final preparations. In addition to the crew's arrival, our teams will also gather on Monday for the flight readiness review ahead of the launch. This launch will mark the first time a human spaceflight mission will lift off from Space Launch Complex 40, and our NASA and SpaceX teams have been working hand in hand with our Space Force mission partners, and together we are looking forward to a successful launch. We're excited to welcome back to the Kennedy Space Center astronaut Nick Haig, who will serve as commander for this mission, and Ross Cosmos cosmonaut and mission specialist Alexander Gorbanov. Greeting these astronauts on the runways always gets me excited, and it makes it means we're in the final days before a human spaceflight launch, and that's always something very special. But before we hear from the crew, I'd like to introduce someone whose leadership has been instrumental to the success of the commercial crew program as we launch humans to the International Space Station from American soil. Serving as the commercial crew deputy program manager here at the Kennedy Space Center, please join me in welcoming Dana Hutcherson. Dana? Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here and thank you for your interest in this mission and in our program. I'm Dana Hutcherson, Deputy Program Manager for Commercial Crew Program here at Kennedy Space Center. I'm very excited to be here today welcoming Nick Haig and Alexander Gorbanov as they prepare for launch on NASA's Crew-9 mission on SpaceX's rocket. As Kelvin mentioned, this will be the first human spaceflight off of Slick 40, Space Launch Complex 40 over on the Cape side. I'm extremely proud of this uh, joint commercial crew program and SpaceX team for all the hard work it, it took to get the pad certified in time. This is a huge increase in capability for us with two pads now rated for human spaceflight. We now have operational flexibility with SpaceX to deconflict launches at both 39A and Slick 40. Haig and Gorbanov will launch the uh, space station aboard SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft named Freedom. This uh, Dragon previously flew on Crew-4 and Axiom's, Axiom's 2 and 3 missions, so this will be the fourth flight for this Dragon. The crew will spend about five months aboard the station performing more than 200 critical science and research investigations that will help us explore beyond low Earth orbit. Very exciting as we get into final preparations for this, for this launch and to be here today. As our teams are preparing their final preparations for launch, we're looking forward to getting these two crew members up into space. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to the crew. Thank you. Yeah, good afternoon and uh, 
Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you, Dana. Uh, it is exciting to be here uh, to take that next step to come make final preparations and uh, and get ready to launch in a few days. Uh, I want to echo Kelvin's uh, words. It has been spectacular to be part of such an amazing team, especially over the last couple months. Uh, they've been fairly dynamic, and the team has allowed us uh, to respond to those changes in the mission and, and prepare us. Uh, the SpaceX team, the NASA team, uh, have worked diligently preparing us to get ready to launch as a two-person crew. Our crewmates, Zena and Stephanie, have been integral to that effort over the past several weeks, making sure that we're ready to launch together. Uh, testament to their professionalism. And uh, we're excited. We're ready. Alex, I'll turn it over to Alex for a few words. Всем добрый день. Я очень рад сегодня присутствовать здесь, в этом историческом месте, в Kennedy Space Center, потому что это означает, что до старта остаются считанные дни. Good day. Good day, everybody. I am really excited to be here at Kennedy Space Center. It's a historic place, and it means that the launch is getting nearer and nearer. И, конечно, я с нетерпением жду предстоящего старта, предстоящего полета на корабле Dragon и нашей долговременной миссии в составе экспедиции 72. And of course I can't wait for the launch uh, to fly on the Dragon Beagle and to become a part of the ISS crew within the Expedition 72. В эти самые минуты, пока мы с вами разговариваем, огромное количество людей из SpaceX, NASA и других смежных организаций uh, готовят нашу ракету, готовят корабль готовят стартовые сооружения к пуску. И я хотел бы их поблагодарить за их труд. As we are talking in front of you right now, there are hundreds of people from NASA and SpaceX uh, working on preparing the launch pad, preparing the rocket for our launch. So I would like to express my deepest gratitude to all of them. И, конечно, я хотел бы поблагодарить uh, инструкторскую бригаду из SpaceX, NASA, и центр подготовки космонавтов, которые потратили сотни и сотни часов, готовя нас к миссии. И я уверен, что мы успешно uh, выполним все поставленные задачи. Спасибо. And of course, I would like to also express my thanks to the training teams at NASA, at SpaceX, and at uh, GCTC, who spent hundreds of hours training us and making sure that we succeed in our mission. And I have no doubt that we will. Thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, crew. Um, we're now going to jump into our media Q&A portion. We have a microphone up at the front, so please line up if you'd like to ask the crew a question. We ask that you limit yourself to one question each. Um, so when you get up to the microphone, please state your name, your media affiliation, and who your question is directed to. Um, Marcia Dunn, AP, for you, Nick, as commander. It's not often a mission changes as drastically and suddenly as yours has. Describe what it's like, has been like on a personal level for you these past few weeks. And do you, do you feel more urgency and responsibility now that your number one job is to bring Butch and Sunny home safely? You know, there have been a lot of changes to our particular uh, spacecraft, you know, crew. Uh, but the mission really hasn't changed. The, the mission hasn't changed for two and a half decades. It's to get up to the station and do, do research. And uh, that mission is bigger than any one crew. So we respond to the dynamic nature of, of what we need to do, and we're asked to step up to that. So it's, it's been a treat to be part of the team and see how they've responded and, and come together and help us adapt how we operate inside the vehicle to be able to do this. And so I'm just really thankful uh, to be part of all of that. Hi, thank you for doing this. I'm Ken Kramer from Space Up Close. So my question is for both of you. I'm a scientist. I'd like to hear about some of the science experiments you find that are the most interesting that you're going to be doing and anything with the human body. Also, will you be doing in any EVA spacewalks? And for Alexander, will you be operating the uh, European robotic arm? So let's hear from both of you. Thank you. Да, у нас предусматривается в программе полета огромное количество экспериментов. 
Yes, indeed. We have a lot of science pro, uh, projects and programs planned for our mission. Один из очень интересных экспериментов это эксперимент по плавке кристаллов специальной печи, которая находится на станции. And one of the very interesting experiments that I'm particularly uh, excited about is smelting different crystals in a special oven. Мы можем с помощью этого оборудования получать уникальные кристаллические структуры и затем исследовать их на Земле, которые эти структуры невозможно получить на Земле только в космосе. And we are going to be uh, as part of like as part of this experiment, you get various crystal structures that is impossible to get on Earth. So we'll get them back and uh, we'll be able to study them. Да, что касается работы с Эрой, да, планируется в этой экспедиции работа с Эрой. На декабрь месяц планируется выход в открытый космос у экипажа, и с помощью Эры будет осуществляться поддержка этого выхода. And yes, indeed, as far as the European robotic arm era is concerned, I will be supporting because there, there is an EVA scheduled for December. So I'll be part of that. Yeah, getting to be part of the science is, is where the fun's at. And, and in a very personal way, we get to participate in many of those experiments as a test subject. And so a lot of those are looking at health how the body is regulating its temperature, how, how being in microgravity affects my blood flow or how my DNA works. And so all of those are going to be fun to be part of. Um, you asked about spacewalks. Uh, you know, we're, we're planning on doing some spacewalks. The, the content of that is still coming together. Obviously, we were hoping to do some spacewalks this summer, and that didn't, didn't work out. Um, sometimes the science and spacewalks overlap a little bit. And, and one of the things I have had training in the NBL to, to be ready to do is to go and help fix the NICER experiment, our X-ray observatory, and so that could potentially be part of some of the, the spacewalk content. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, folks. This is Charles Boyer from Florida Media Now. A uh, question for you mainly, Nick. How will you integrate your Crew-9 members once you get on station, and will you be the one training them on safe Dragon operation? Thanks. Yeah, we're going to launch as a two-person crew, and then we're going to land as a four-person crew. And one of the unique challenges of that is how do we integrate the other two crew members into the Dragon operations when they've had very minimal Dragon training before they launched. Um, the teams on the ground have helped not only get us ready, but they've already started helping Butch and Sonny train to understand what they're going to need to do inside of inside of the Dragon, but that's going to be top priority when we get there and while we have a period of handover the first week or so is is having that dedicated time to help them understand what they're going to need to do to operate as, as part of the Crew-9 crew. The space flight now, good to see you both again. Uh, Looking at the, the mission patch behind you on the display, notice no one's name is on there, and so I wanted to sort of building off of some of the previous questions, ask about crew cohesion and, and sort of how you build that where normally you'd have, you know, months if not longer on the ground and in a various type of environment to get to know one another and sort of build that uh, bonding experience. Sort of if that's sort of symbolic of this being sort of a fresh slate, perhaps, or just your thoughts on, on that and building cohesion with people that, you know, you've not been in proximity with leading into this. Thank you. Yeah, the, the lack of names on the patch, I think, is emblematic of, like I said before, this mission is bigger than any one crew. It's bigger than any one person. And so uh, we've got a dynamic challenge ahead of us. And, and it, in the response to how do we adjust and how do we adapt to do the mission that we've got to do, I've never felt closer to my my crewmates, I've, you know, the, that bond that you've built, you know, that we built for the better part of a year and a half with Zena and Stephanie was as strong as ever as they're working side by side with us, helping getting us ready. Um, and then, you know, we don't just train together when we're assigned, we train together before that. 
And so I've had opportunities to work with Butch and Sonny. I've, I've had opportunities to, to train as part of Knowles and share a tent with Sonny for 10 days in the wilderness. And so, so we know each other, and, and we're professionals, and we step up and, and do what's asked of us. So uh, I'm looking forward to working with them, uh, and I think we're going to pull together without a problem. Hi, I'm Dr. Walk from Embry-Riddle, reporting for Earth Sky. I just am curious of how higher education has played a part in your journey to get here. Да, образование очень сильно повлияло на мое решение. Я закончил Московский авиационный институт. Специальность моя космические летательные аппараты и разгонные блоки. Это имеет прямое отношение к пилотируемым космическим полетам. Well, indeed, education has played a great role in bringing me where I am right now because I graduated from the Moscow uh, Aviation Institute and I was specializing in rocket engineering, uh, um, <coughs> spacecraft engineering, specializing in booster rockets. И после окончания института я работал долгое время в ракетной космической корпорации Энергия, которая производит пилотируемые корабли Союз. And actually, after I graduated, I worked for quite some time at uh, RSC Energia. That's a uh, corporation that basically builds booster rockets. И постоянно находясь в среде инженеров, uh, я понимал, что космос не так далек, как мог бы показаться ранее. И тебя окружают вокруг инженеры. Uh, космонавты в том числе, поэтому э, было принято решение попробовать поступить в отряд. And I was all the time around engineers, among my colleagues, and I was thinking, hey, space doesn't seem so far anymore, it's reachable, and then there were cosmonauts around me, and I'm like, why don't I try? И, как видите, получилось. And that's where I am now. Hello guys, my name is Astro with Space Scout, and my question is, what has training been like up to the flight with the crew members compared to the four crew members, and are you guys still in touch with Stephanie and Sina at the moment? So when you look at how we would traditionally break up the roles and responsibilities in a four-person crew, uh, we're able to balance that across the mission specialist as well as the pilot and the commander. And, and so the, the adaptation we've had to make is how do we take those responsibilities and divide that amongst just two of us. And some of that has, is, a, is how you respond to emergencies. Um, a lot of that we practice over and over. How do I respond to a potential fire or how would I respond to a potential depressurization event? And in those moments, you want to be able to respond reflexively without a lot of coordination so everybody already understands their role and responsibility so that you can be safe. And so we've, in the past three weeks, had to adapt that response and ingrain that response so that we're ready uh, if, you know, something unfortunate like that would happen, we're going to be able to keep ourselves safe. That's, that's the principal challenge. Hello, my name is Sean McConaughey with the Avion at Embry-Riddle. My question is, what remaining challenges, if any, does the team have to work through with Space Launch Complex 40? And what will your remaining training look like with that? So launching from Slick 40 is something new. Uh, it's new and exciting. And so in the final preparations leading up to launch, one of the things we're going to have to do is go out and do some familiarization uh, with the emergency egress equipment on, on Slick 40. Uh, previously in July, we were out and we were able to do that for Pad 39A. The mission changed, we changed pads, and so now we're working off Slick 40. Uh, so that, that'll spend a couple hours over the next couple days uh, going out and making sure that we know how to use the systems that are in place. Hi, I'm Dominic Popolo from the Aviana Embry-Riddle. So my question is, where do you see the future of human spaceflight going with the International Space Station and the opening of the new launch pad and other advancements made? Я думаю, с открытием нового пускового стола мы сможем запускать 
космические корабли к станции в гораздо более короткие сроки. То есть будет меньше конфликтов между стартами. Well, I think this new capability, this new launch pad, uh, gives us more maneuverability, less scheduling conflict, and we'll be able to launch easier. И, конечно, это отразится на работе станции. Экипаж будет меняться на станции более стабильно, будет более стабильная работа с научным оборудованием на станции. And of course, it's probably going to have a positive effect on the operations on board the ISS. So the crew are going to be changing out regularly uh, with no interruptions. So uh, it will have a very positive effect on the ISS. If I was going to add something in a, in, a, in a broader sense, where are we going with all of this change? Uh, it's exciting because it's more inclusive. Uh, we have international, this foundation of international cooperation and collaboration that we've, we've been doing on the ISS for the last two and a half decades. And, and now that's starting to extend into the commercial sector. And all of this is increasing capability. And, and having been there and having seen the earth from the cupola, uh, the more people that can see that vantage point, the better off we're all going to be. Ashton Guitar with Daytona State College. Um, so given the high degree of change that the architecture for this mission has seen already, how do you think this is going to teach NASA and SpaceX moving forward to handle more of a dynamic situation when it comes to, uh, you know, changing the schedules of the crew rotations of different missions? I, I think if you look at the history of human spaceflight, the constant is change. There's there is always something that is changing. Uh, maybe this time it's been a little more visible to the to the public, the general public. Uh, but there are always changes that are happening, and we're always responding to the to the me needs of the mission and and the demands of the environment. And so, I think the result of us being ready to launch is just a testament that the systems, the the teams, the people. They know how to respond to change already, and this is an example of, of us doing just that. Hi, how are you doing? Adam Bernstein for Spaceflight Now. Uh, given that Alexander is serving as mission specialist and not pilot for the trip to the ISS, uh, what are his responsibilities during the trip to the space station, and what is the breakdown of responsibilities for the four-member crew on the return trip? Probably to Nick. Yeah, so... So the, the, the crew complement, essentially, we're, we're flying without a pilot. And, and so fundamentally, the commander is responsible for keeping the crew safe, keeping the vehicle safe, and making sure we get the mission done. And so those responsibilities haven't changed. How we delegate out all the other associated things are, are, are kind of up to the commander to decide. And, and so... Alex is going to be working to support me during all the dynamic phases of flight and, and provide me with a, and the extra set of eyes, the extra set of hands that, that I would need and that I would leverage if I had a pilot sitting next to me. Um, so in that way, it's, it's not very different. Hi, Dr. Walk reporting for Earth Sky. I just have a follow-up question. What advice would you give current students who are aspiring to be in the position that you are now? So basic advice is you find your passion. Find that thing that really excites you and, and gets you energized and then pursue that passion. Uh, and that's going to open so many doors. Uh, and, and it's, you know, you're asking a question that following up from education and what that means, that, that foundation of that passion begins in education and learning everything that you can about what is it that something special that you, you want to learn all about? Uh, for Alex and I, it happens to be the same thing. I studied how to build spacecraft and how to build rockets, and that's what all my degrees are in. Uh, so you can tell what we're passionate about. If, but that's not the only thing that you, you know, you don't have to study that in order to, to want to fly to space and be able to fly to space. It takes a dynamic team, a diverse team, and, and we're going through a selection process right now to select a new class of, of astronaut candidates at NASA, and, and I can tell you that there, there is no one path to get there. We're just looking for exceptional people that, that work well in teams and, and people want to be around.
Oh, hi, Marcia Dan AP again. Um, what are Butch and Sunny telling you ahead of lunch? You've surely been in touch with them, and are they making any special requests for you to bring things? So we have been in touch with, with Butch and Sonny. Uh, they are excited for us to get there, and they have made special requests. I, I'm doing my best to, to, to answer those requests, but we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep you guessing. All right, thank you again so much to the crew. Um, and thank you again to all the media and for those of you who caught this broadcast on NASA Plus. I know it's a gorgeous day out here and a lot of you are missing some much desired bow time. So we'll let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.